As the 2010 season begins, the Harvard Crimson have a tough act to follow. During the previous 10 years, Coach Tim Murphy's squads turned in one of the most successful decades of any team in college football. Coaches and players know the bar has been set extremely high. Expectations must be followed by achievement. That is the challenge presented to the 137th Harvard University football team as it begins a season filled with ancient eight competition, non-league rivalries, and of course, the game. Even before the first kickoff of the 2010 season, Harvard's football team faced a major challenge. In their initial preseason scrimmage, returning quarterback Collier Winters suffered a crucial injury that would keep him on the sideline for five games. But that potential disaster was softened, initially by the return to Harvard of Andrew Hatch, who had been a Crimson freshman in 2005. Against Patriot League opponent Holy Cross, 24-year-old Andrew Hatch took command of the offense for the first time in several years. The senior shook off any rust, threw for 276 yards and three touchdowns, and quickly introduced himself to the Holy Cross defense. It was fitting that returning All-Ivy running back Geno Gordon scored the first touchdown of the new season. Before the largest night game audience ever at Harvard Stadium, Hatch continued to dissect the Crusaders' secondary. Marco Iannuzzi, a senior from Calgary, Alberta, and Chris Lordich, a senior from Chalfont, Pennsylvania, were both prime targets. On defense, the Crimson stuffed the visitors' attack, holding them to just 84 yards on the ground. Linebacker Blaze Deal stole one pass and added 11 tackles. On a night when Harvard blasted Holy Cross for 34 points, Crimson fans were relieved to discover they had a leader to step in for the injured winners. But the Crimson had little way of knowing a second injury to the quarterback position could strike another blow to their league title hopes. Mistakes and penalties cast a dark shadow over Harvard's Ivy League opener at Brown. A bright spot was the play of Marco Iannuzzi, who scored both Crimson touchdowns. After latching on to an Andrew Hatch throw to end the first half, Iannuzzi grabbed the second half kickoff and could not be caught. The 95-yard play was the longest kickoff return for a touchdown for Harvard since 1932 and the third longest in school history. Iannuzzi would finish with close to 200 all-purpose yards, but the Crimson would suffer their first setback of the new season. When the first day of fall practice approached, Colton Chapel was third on the depth chart at quarterback. But injuries to Collier Winters and now Andrew Hatch thrust the sophomore from Alpharetta, Georgia into the starting role at Lafayette. And the young quarterback, who had completed just a single pass in his college career, guided the Crimson flawlessly. Overpowering the Leopards' defense, Harvard rolled to 311 yards on the ground. Behind a dominant offensive line, running backs Geno Gordon and Trevor Scales both blasted into the end zone in the first half. Those two touchdowns were wrapped around Chapel's first scoring toss wearing Crimson. Throw to Jesus, got him inside. He is in for the touchdown. Touchdown, Crimson. While Harvard's offense was returning to the thunder of the Holy Cross victory, the defense was smothering any hopes Lafayette had for an upset. Hard-hitting Blaze Deal, a junior from Glendale, Arizona, sparked the Crimson D that recorded four sacks and limited the home team to just 60 yards rushing. On offense, Gordon turned in one of his finest games ever. The senior from Bonita, California, would finish with 170 yards rushing, including the longest dash of his career. Gino Gordon all the way for the touchdown. Gordon would sit out much of the second half, giving many of the young backs an opportunity for game experience. Chapel's first collegiate start proved a success as the Crimson played turnover-free football. The 35-10 triumph they pinned on the Leopards was Lafayette's most one-sided setback since 2002 and improved Harvard to 2-1 and one on the young season.
During 17 successful years on the Harvard sideline, Tim Murphy had coached 162 games. Never had his team completed two consecutive games with more than 300 yards rushing until Cornell came to Cambridge. For the second week in a row, Geno Gordon turned up the Jets, roaring past the big red for 158 yards and a touchdown. He runs off tackle the left, gets a great block, has the five, diving for the pylon. He's across, lost the football, it's loose. Three players pounce on top, and now the signal is a Harvard touchdown. Double G would return for an even more spectacular encore in the final period. But first, the Crimson defenders earned some acclaim of their own. Junior defensive end Ben Graff from Canton, Ohio, proved a one-man wrecking crew with four of his team's nine sacks. So stingy was the Harvard D that Cornell could barely squeeze out an average of three yards any time they touched the ball. Sophomore punter Jacob Dombrowski of Gaylord, Michigan, helped keep the visitors off balance, twice pinning Cornell inside its own five. Adding a long kick of 58 yards to his resume, Dombrowski was named Ivy League Special Teams Player of the Week. Starting his second straight game, quarterback Chapel lifted a pass to the corner of the end zone, pulled in by junior Levi Richards from Newton, Illinois. Harvard would finish with 17 plays of 10 or more yards and a total offense of 505 yards. As usual, the young men who, without question, energized the Crimson offense were named Gordon, Scales, and Rich Sajewski. Has some more room. He's gone. Across the 20, 15, 10, 5, and touchdown. 42-yard touchdown run. Zajewski, a sophomore from Hinsdale, Illinois, would team with Scales for nearly 140 yards on the ground. Then, late in the game, Cornell was hit with another dose of Gordon as he burned them for 65 yards. The 75th renewal of this rivalry was all crimson. Rolling up 31 points, Harvard would add their ninth triumph over Cornell in their last 10 encounters. When Patriot League opponent Lehigh visited Harvard, fans witnessed two halves as opposite as could be imagined. The Crimson totally controlled the opening 30 minutes, grabbing a 17-0 advantage. Geno Gordon would finish with his third consecutive 100-yard rushing game, and Kyle Jesic would grab his second touchdown of the season. However, the second half was a different story. Lehigh stormed back, scoring 21 unanswered points. As time ran out, the home team came up just two points short, 21-19. Traveling to Princeton, the Harvard Crimson bounced back from the disappointment of the Lehigh game. And how they bounced back. Their 583 yards of total offense against the Tigers was the most in any game since 2003 and the sixth highest in school history. Leading the tidal wave of yards that flooded Princeton secondary was a career-high 204 from Geno Gordon. Pitches to Gordon. He's across the 20. Has some room. He has daylight towards the end zone. Dives for the pylon. He's there. Touchdown, Crimson. Averaging more than 10 yards per carry, Gordon was named Ivy League Co-Offensive Player of the Week. When the Harvard senior paused to catch his breath, Trevor Scales, a sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia, battered the Tigers for 134 yards and a touchdown. The powerful and elusive duo of Gordon and Scales ranked number one and number two in Ivy League yards per carry. Along with the offense, the Crimson defenders would not be denied. Two interceptions by sophomore Alexander Norman included a highlight film one-handed grab. Team captain Colin Zitch from Plano, Texas, tamed a few more Tigers with 15 tackles. When Harvard's offense regrouped for the second half, a familiar face returned to the lineup. Quarterback Collier Winters had missed the first five full games with an injury. Recapturing the form that earned him first-team All-Ivy honors a year ago, Winters found tight end Kyle Jesich for a pair of touchdowns. Fires complete. Jusic has it, and he stumbles across the goal line. Touchdown, Crimson. Crimson special teams enliven the final period with a big play of their own. Rolling towards the end zone, Flurry rushes back to get it, tries to get the kick away. He can't do it. It's blocked loose to the end zone. The Crimson covers it up for six. Harvard's 45 points were the most they ever scored on Princeton in the 103 game series. The 45 to 28 triumph gives the Crimson 13 victories in their last 15 games with Princeton.